Hello. Do you want to see what's inside here? We're back. Welcome to Lemster. We got back the other day and we thought that um, just to wrap things up a little bit for you um, is A to show you our home. So this is where we live. Uh, we've done a bit of unpacking haven't we? Yeah. But there was a few items I suppose that we left in the bag that we thought we might pull out of the bag, show you um, and you know did we use it, did we not use it? Um, just to, if you're planning to do the Camino for the first time um, I suppose just to get a bit of a, uh, an understanding of what we went through. First things first, cup of tea. Cheers. Tea. Cheers. Hello. Hello. One for you. One for you. Good boy. Who's who, Lou? So this is Bertie. Bertie is our basset hound. He's uh, nearly seven, actually. Seven in October. Um, so he is very stubborn, very handsome, very lovely. Um, really nice for the kids. And then this is Monty. Yes, yes. This is Monty, he's our Sprudel. Um, so he's actually a cross between a miniature poodle and a Welsh Springer Spaniel. And he's uh, six this year. Morning, here we are, Monday morning. And uh, we're just getting ourselves ready for the uh, Camino de Santiago. Um, so we thought we'd share with you this morning the stuff that we think we need for a six weeks journey with two children. Um, and then what we'll do at the end is we'll have a look at that kit again and see what we got rid of. So what we dumped along the way and actually the stuff that we forgot as well. So we'll share that with you also. So um, here we go, we'll uh, have a look now. So here's my rucksack. Mm. So um, the rucksacks that we bought, um, this one's a 36 litre. You carried, I think, a 34? No, mine was a 32. 32 litres. Yeah. So what the labels on. That's how fresh and new we are. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Henry, I think, had a 30. Megan had a 25. Yeah. And they worked really well. Yeah, they were all, I think we got the sizing right for us, certainly. Yeah. Most most backpacks nowadays, anyway, comes with these um, side mm. um, uh, pockets and also harnesses that goes around your waist mm -hmm. and they're, they're just amazing because it just takes the weight off your shoulders a little bit yeah um, and the other thing is as well is you've got these little pockets with zips in um, so for us it was camera batteries headphones headphones sweets sweets <laughs> yeah um, mobile phone mm. went in here yeah um, uh, lip balm yeah um, yeah. Things like that went into the side pockets. Yeah. Um, so you didn't have to keep keep going around them yeah. and taking the rucksack off. Things that you needed. That that took hard work. Back okay. and forth. Oh, the mm. one thing that actually we've had a lot of questions about on Instagram and Facebook is the mummy liner. Yeah. Quite a few people have asked us yeah. if we've taken sleeping bags and things like that. Yeah. So. Yeah. So we took mummy liners. Um, they're a lot thinner, so if you don't know what a mummy liner is, uh, effectively goes inside a sleeping bag. Mm. Um, it's a lot thinner, um, so if I just take this one out and show you, there we go. So it's effectively a big, big cloth where you can um, pop yourself in, climb into it, climb into it. Um, but these were really useful, weren't they? Yeah, I think yeah. I think we did the right thing. It worked for yeah. us to have those. You yeah. could climb into them. Yeah. Certainly at first, when we were still a bit nervous about bed bugs and things like that and cleanliness, yeah. we yeah. would we would dive into them. Yeah. Towards the end, when it was quite hot and we were less worried about that kind of thing and just a bit tired, mm. um, I know I know the kids used them to sleep under and things like that. Instead, I certainly slept under mine a few times as well. So it was just a nice cool sheet. We were walking in a heat wave, so. Yeah. We wouldn't have wanted anything thicker than that. No. And sometimes it, that was too much. Yeah, so just be cautious. If you are going in a cooler period, mm. you're going to need something thicker than this. They do have blankets. A lot of the hostels now, Burgos, that we yeah. stayed at, they had big, thick wool blankets as well. Because the yeah. last few days, certainly, it got quite cold yeah. um, and you could pull the blanket over. But I don't think everywhere has them. So it's something to really think about if we're going in the winter or the autumn or the spring, in fact. Yeah. One thing that we've been recommended to get actually is this, which is. Bed bug spray, because I think that's a bit of a thing. Um, en route, we've got some bed bug spray, which we'll spray our liners with, assume sort of as we go, um, just to try and make them a bit repellent to anything that might want to crawl in and sleep with us. We sprayed them every five or six days, I yeah. think. Yeah, so nearly every week we got them out, we hung them up, we sprayed them. 
let them dry and then uh, put back in it. We never had a single bed bug, did we? No, and I don't know if that was to do with the spray or just to do with the fact that the cleanliness was so good. So yeah, okay. So this here is a uh, washing line. Um, it's got a clip on the end there. Um, and actually, um, I don't know if you can see it there, um, it's, it's a double run washing line, so you can actually feed things through, so you don't need pegs. Um, I think we use this once. Maybe twice. Maybe twice. Mm. Would I take this again? No. no. I wouldn't take it again. Um, the albergues and pensions are all really well set up um, for drying, you know, so um, you don't them, worry yeah. too much. They had, they had outdoor washing lines. Um, yeah. They didn't always have pegs. So sometimes you just had to sort of hang stuff across, but quite yeah. often they had pegs. Yeah. They, a lot of them had tumble dryers that you could use for three or four euros or so. So, yeah. yeah. And I would swap this actually for a few pegs. Yeah, yeah. Just a few plastic pegs just your to socks. hold your socks. <laughs> totally. We've each got, we bought them a while ago. We got rid of our fluffy towels a while ago and bought Haman towels, so Turkish towels. So we've got these organic cotton ones off Amazon. And they're so brilliant. It's one of the best things I've ever bought. They're really thin. They dry really quickly. You don't have to put them in the tumble dryer, so they're more eco-friendly. Um, they're massive. So they double up as picnic blankets, blankets. Um, possibly we'll be sleeping underneath them. And we can roll them up and use them as a pillow. We can dry ourselves. And it dries really quickly. So you wear it as a sarong, everything. So they're brilliant. Um, but Megan used this one. Um, it's not that big, but it's big enough for the body. Yeah. And actually, she used it as well to use as a bit of a blanket yeah. at night time. And I use it sometimes as well, because Megan took to using my towel as a blanket as well. So yeah. um, it was fine. It's not very satisfying to dry yourself with, but it worked, it's yeah. functional. So, yeah. And it dries really quickly, so it's ideal, because what you don't want to be doing is chucking a damp towel in your bag in the morning. So you could leave it hanging overnight off the end of the bed, yeah. use it as a bit of a privacy screen on your bunk as well. Yeah. And then um, it yeah. was dry in the morning and you could chuck it in your bag. So, yeah. so definitely a fine. lightweight towel. What else have what we got? Else? Second. Oh, yeah. ah, this one. <laughs> so this is- Well loved. Well loved Virgin Atlantic freebie goodie bag that we got given, I don't know when, when we last okay. flew with them. Um, but what we did put in here is all the essential stuff. So um, we've got uh, ibuprofen, ibuprofen gel, mm -hmm. uh, which we did use, didn't we? Yeah. Quite often we got yeah. this one out. So for feet, knees, um, you know, bumps and lumps basically that was yeah. causing pain. So yeah. uh, localized pain. So we, we definitely took that one with us. The other kind of gel that we don't have anymore because we chucked it on the way home. But um, we also bought, when we were in Spain, we bought some, um, the red stuff, iodine gel. Oh, iodine gel. Iodine yeah. gel in a tube from yeah. the chemist. That was yeah. for blisters. Yeah. I don't think you need to take it, but if you start to get blisters when you're out there, it's worth buying the iodine gel so yeah. that if you do find yourself popping blisters, you can cover them with the iodine gel. And I never had, I mean, I had a lot of blister popping done, so yeah. never any infection. And no I'm infection. sure it was the gel. Yeah. Um, so definitely worth taking that or having that when you're out there if you do have that problem. And very handy to use to, um, Somebody will shout at me on the comments, sure. <laughs> uh, but very handy to use to sanitize when you don't have like boiling water or anything like that yeah. to, for the uh, needle. Yeah. Um, so at least you can use that. Right. The other thing that we carried in here. Speaking of blisters. Where's the compedes? <laughs> um, so we got various size compedes. There's this one, the big one. Um, and then there's two other ones. One for your toes. Let me see if I can find one. Yeah. Um, one for your toes, which was like, like that sort of size. Um, and then a, a, like a baby version of the one I just showed you. Um, and uh, we threw them all into this bag um, and actually we handed a few out to other people, weren't yeah. we, that were struggling. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the great thing about this little bag was um, we actually, um, it was easy to find inside the rucksack. Yeah. So, uh, or the backpack. So we always kept it to the top because mm. we knew we'd use it throughout the day mm. um, or probably be crawling upon it during the day. And you don't want to be digging all the way down the bottom of your, where your socks are. So anything we didn't need during the day was always down the bottom, um, mm -hmm. things like this. Um, and it, are oh, they just a godsend? Yeah. So. The other thing that we you would have found in there at the time would have been a shampoo bar. So we bought a solid shampoo. Yeah. And then what we did is we carried it in like a little, you know, the little plastic bags that you get at the airport for your 100ml 
yeah. liquids. Yeah. Um, that kind of bag. We would keep the shampoo bar and also a soap bar in a separate plastic little bag. Mm. And then you could just put it back in wet and it was fine. And the other thing that I we started to do was you go for a shower, your shampoo bar or your soap bar is wet. You don't want to put a wet thing back in. You stick it on the top of the plastic bag let it dry for an hour or so, then stick it back in the bag and, and you can take it off and you don't end up getting yeah. everything in a mess. Yeah. And also you're not carrying too much weight because the soap bars and the shampoo bars are a lot lighter. So Definitely. that's my little tip. Oh, totally. <laughs> shampoo bars and... Yeah, it was brilliant. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> the poncho. My poncho. So as you can see, the rain has set in just for a little bit. It's just a little shower. In it, Lou. Just a little shower. <laughs> just a little shower. I did. <laughs> I did ask if it's wrong to like wearing a poncho. I love wearing a poncho. So yes, definitely a poncho. Mm. Um, go for as lightweight as you possibly can without it being too cheap that it rips. That's mm. one thing. Um, the other thing is, well, is the learning that I had was um, these ponchos are just for bodies and not the rucksacks. Mm. Um, now, um, if I was to do this again, I would buy the poncho that actually had the form of the rucksack or backpack within the moulding of the poncho. Uh, yeah, I saw a few of those. Yeah, mm. it saves a lot and you can put it right over and pull it down to your body and you don't have the exposed, um, exposed back. Not concerned about the backpack because the backpacks contain their own covers anyway so the right at the bottom normally with a zip you just pull them out and put them over um, but um, yeah that was my learning from the ponchos but I would definitely take this again yeah without a doubt <laughs> a knife knife now you obviously um, you may have restrictions carrying this on your airplane um, but it'd be worthwhile buying one when you're in uh, in your starting point yeah. it's just a little like vegetable knife um, it's handy for things like bread, um, mm. for spreading jam, cutting cheese, yeah. slicing ham, yeah. you know, into smaller pieces, etc. It really come in quite handy. I'd definitely take it again. Yeah, especially if you're trying to save a little bit of money and not eat out constantly, yeah. um, you know, and you're trying to take some bread along, it, it can yeah. be a pain if you, you know, you want to butter your bread or something, so we'll put some cheese on. Every trip has to have um, especially when you're on the Camino and we're walking through the Rocca Valley, yeah, we need to take a corkscrew. So um, I've misplaced mine, I don't know where it's gone, but we had it during the journey um, and we did use it. Um, but make sure you get a lightweight one and not the metal one like I bought, because the metal <laughs> one is quite heavy. Yeah. Um, but uh, definitely make sure you've got one because otherwise you might not be able to open that Rocca. Keep going, Lou, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Empty that. Doing it all. And he left. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Oh, nice. The book. The Bible. The Bible. The very well thumbed our copy of Pilgrim's Guide to the Camino Santiago um, by John Briley. The John Briley Guide. We yeah. saw a lot of these. There was loads of these on the tour. Yeah. Yeah. Everywhere. You could tell we were sat in cafes, people would be like yeah. thumbing through their copies. Yeah. But this, this was essential wasn't it so it's, yeah. it's make sure you get an updated copy um things would have changed a lot um in the last few years especially yeah. during covid because of closures with some of the albergues or cafes mm -hmm. unfortunately some businesses didn't survive but and the other thing to do as well on this is actually um get you understand how it's how it's laid out yeah um, you know it tells you the distances between the towns or between the stops um and uh, also it gives you the ascents and descents. Um, it really helps you prepare for, the, for like the following stage because you say actually it's quite a lot of uphill. What footwear do I need to wear, you know, etc. Do I need to leave early? Is it going to be hot tomorrow? Um, so these, these books, like Louis said, have been well thumbed, um, you know, and, and pages have fallen out. And, yeah. and it's, it's a nice memento actually of this yeah. being on our journey. So There are apps. Yeah. Um, there's yeah. plenty of apps and we did try a few of them while we were out there. Yeah. We generally found there was something nice about having the book, yeah. and we could pass it around between us, yeah. and um, yeah. it just worked better for us. There are apps, but but we found the book just was nicer for us to was, use. Was spot on, and the kids kept grabbing it. Yeah, they? yeah. So we had it in the back of Louise's rucksack, so it could always be pulled out by anybody. Yeah. Um, and the kids pulled it out because if they went 
past a town or a, a road sign or something, they'd go and have a look to see how far it was to the next town. To the next coffee. Or to the next <laughs> or food. Or the next food. Next food. So, um, you know, this, this, we really, that's, that's one of the things, yeah. you just can't leave yeah. home without that one. Yeah, we love that. Love that one, absolutely love that one. So obviously, you'll have your footwear for, for, for your walking, yeah? Um, what we found and what I used later on due to foot injury, etc., um, and blisters and stuff is actually um, moving to a shoe that is more sandal based. Um, a lot of people were walking, weren't they, later on um, in their sandals with socks on, um, you know, and um, you know, it worked perfectly well for me as an individual. Um, and um, it was nice actually to allow your feet to breathe a little bit when you had blisters or a bit of damage. Yeah, I would say that's an essential actually is to have a second pair of shoes and not just rely on your walking boots. Whether that's a pair of flip flops for going to the shower yeah. in the evening because you don't want to be, well you have to take your boots off in most places and leave yeah. them down at the entrance. So yeah. then you're on barefoot so you may want to have flip flops, sandals, just something lighter. Yeah. And like Mark said, a lot of people end up walking in them towards the end as well. So, And also if you do get blisters, it's such a joy to take off your boots and put something else on your feet. Yeah. And what are we wearing on our feet? What sort of stuff are we wearing on our feet? The socks as well. Socks, so I have got a new pair of darn tough hiking socks. So I'll report back on whether they're any good because it's the most expensive pair of socks I've ever had in my life. I think these were about £19 a pair, which just seems like an awful lot for a pair of socks to me. I wear buy a pair of shoes for that. Most importantly, I won't get these out, but it is the Queen's Jubilee while we're away and we're missing the Jubilee bank holiday and all of the, the shenanigans that are going on over here. So we thought, well, so long as we can fit them in, we'll take our little little Jubilee flags and we'll stick them on our rucksacks on um, the Queen's Jubilee and just fly the flag for the Queen okay. while we're away. Right. We wanted to just show you a little bit of our home, so that we just let you know that we are normal people. <laughs> uh, we have two dogs, this is Ian, Monty and Bertie, who we need to go and uh, take for a walk now. Yes. Um, and um, we will uh, hopefully see you soon. Yeah, there's more to come. We've got um, St Lucia to share with you and also Seville, so, mm. and more, loads to share. Yeah, so there's more coming out this year. So make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you. Hello, Bertie. Hello, Bertie. Hello, Monty. Hello! Say hello! You excited, Lee? I am excited. How excited are you? Excited. <laughs> it's bad!